Hello, and thanks for joining the Frosty Sith channel today for this episode six of the Garden Tours, and the first episode in August, so first Friday. Stay tuned, and we're going to take a look. Here we go. So we're going to start over on the herb garden and pollinator garden today, and for the last couple episodes, I've been you know, saying I hadn't had time to get to this weeding. And actually, I spent about, I don't know, 35, 45 minutes, got all this weeded out. Um, so I've already put down some seeds that need to, you know, make it through the winter before they uh, germinate. And I'll put down some more as we get closer to fall because it is still hot here. It was 109 on the heat index yesterday 103 ambient and uh just excruciating looks like i got a couple of pieces of crabgrass i need to, to pop back up i need to get in there and get but most of these plants are just suffering through the heat and uh, they'll make it and they'll put down seeds and this will be even bigger and better next year the valencia grapes this one is just not doing as well as the one on the left but it is growing so we will uh, continue to try and keep this one pruned. Um, you can see this one main vine is, uh, is getting long enough now. I probably need to tip it soon uh, because it definitely can go all the way across now. So I need to come out and tip that. And then I'm leaving the, what will be spurs, I think, uh, I'm just letting them grow out. And so right now every node, you know, is starting to grow a spur from the bottom out. And so these aren't quite as long as you run down the tip. You know, they're just shorter and shorter, but these will grow out. And then I'll tip these off at the end of the season to about four nodes and, uh, leave it at that, or at least that's my current plan. And I'm no expert on grape pruning, but that's my current plan. All right, let's come over here. The uh, seeds that I planted a few weeks ago are coming up and doing good. So you can see they're, you know, they just continue to sprout. We've got a lot more of them. Actually, you can see in there, once I cleared the, uh, the weeds out, some of the bachelor button that had laid down on the soil, then those are starting to sprout as well, even though it's super hot. And weeding definitely helped the this flower because um, it's now starting to grow. So that's super. Anyway, I'm super impressed with how this looks. You guys may be underwhelmed. The salvia over there, I just need to do something with. It kind of just flattens and spreads. Um, so we'll get this all filled in eventually with stuff. And uh, there's a piece of crabgrass. I can get that out. But we're keeping everything alive, trying to keep the water feature full um, so the pump doesn't run out. It's a solar pump. And these chives have started to sprout. Um, they're probably hard to see here, but there's one coming up right there. There's one right here. There's one right here. There's one right here, right here. So we shouldn't end up with plenty of chives and these should be perennial. So that should be nice for the future. We'll have some chives there, hopefully to come back. Uh, some of the bulbs are starting to come back up and I think these are naked ladies what we call naked ladies uh, Coming up right there a couple of those we've got some more I need to transplant from different areas of the yard to new spots uh, the sunflowers are You know making it but uh, I've already started collecting some seeds See these are, are starting to get ready so here in the next week, I'll probably collect more seeds from both the chocolate, the red, and the, the yellow sunflowers. Zinnias, I just need to come out and deadhead a lot of them and uh, 
pull some of the crabgrass around the edges. Uh, the cherry tree is doing good. And uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna need to do a lot of pruning to it. I think it came properly pruned. So, you know, probably not gonna have to do a lot to this this year. It is putting on, as I mentioned previously, you know, new foliage on all three growing tips. Uh, starting to put off a side shoot down here on this one arm. So I think it's healthy and established. And if 109 to 112 heat index isn't going to kill it, then I think we're probably okay. Um, these zinnias just bring in so many pollinators. It's amazing, especially some really beautiful butterflies. So glad that we're expanding our zinnia presence. So the sunflowers are great. We've got some second round sunflowers. They're struggling to get light because of the size of these peppers, but they're coming up back here. We do have tons of peppers at this point. And so these are the orange spice peppers. When we get down to the other end, we'll take a look at the red Zapotex, but I mean, there's just peppers all over jalapenos. Um, the cantaloupe, trying to keep it reasonably pruned and the running tips pinched off. The cantaloupe, so this is a pretty recent, oh, the bottom busted open. I was going to say, because yesterday this was gray. All right, so this one is, needs harvesting today. <laughs> And uh, let's see if this one's busted open. It is just starting to crack, so at the bottom. So we are going to harvest this one today. I mean, I guess that tendril is is brown right there. The tendril behind it is not, but. Uh, that tendril is definitely brown. So <clears throat> those just ripened really quickly. And we've had that experience with these. Last year we had the same same issue happened in September. We were gone for a week and we came back and we had like, you know, 80 cantaloupe that were ruined, fermented. So, all right, well, I guess after I go to work and get some stuff done, I'll come back and do that. These... Ken Star uh, yellow starburst are starting to put on. Uh, those are not ripe, but they're starting to put on peppers. Uh, this plant has got some peppers. Um, and those look pretty interesting. So I think now Every, every pepper plant has is loading up with peppers. All right, moving on. So then we've got all these are just really loading up and this is the seven pot yellow primo. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. So these are really hot. It looks like I've got a caterpillar or something that has gotten into that one, which is a little weird. Never seen that. But uh, look at those peppers. Hot pepper. All right, moving on. I already mentioned the cantaloupes. We've got tons of cantaloupes. This, I think, is supposed to be the red foodorama. Um, Scotch bonnet. This first one doesn't really look all that classic of a scotch bonnet, but there are some over here that kind of do. 
I think this one right here kind of has the scotch bonnet look. So I'm not sure why that first one is so full, but oh well. This is our Pink Jazz tomato and it is coming along. We'll see, this is kind of an experiment for us to see if we can get a second round of potatoes. We've got this Pink Jazz planted from seed over here and then we've got some clones that I did uh, coming up on three weeks ago now of the carbon that uh, we're gonna see if those will thrive in the ground. We've got this patty pan squash, uh, more cantaloupe against the wall here. And then the Zapotex, you know, they're just loaded. Uh, with jalapenos as well. So those are doing great and every plant is loaded up. So we just have to come in and keep the growing tips pinched off if we don't want these vines to go crazy on the cantaloupes because they sure will. And we don't need that. We're gonna have Tons of cantaloupes. I mean, the little fruit, it's still putting on new fruit that's getting pollinated. See? And so it's going to still put on a ton of cantaloupe. And we got plenty. So same over here, trying to keep this pruned up. You can see it's putting on fruit. Again, the blueberries are doing fine. In fact, I think they're dropping some of their own brown leaves. They just keep getting greener and greener. Uh, that one's still got a little bit of brown on it. These are, that one's almost totally green. Same with that one. So those are looking good. All right, let's take a look at the wild card bed. Ginger is doing okay. That's these plants. There's several of them. There's one in here behind this peanut. It's doing good, and there's a couple that have sprouted on the other side over there. We'll take a look at those. The peanut's doing fine. I mean, it seems to really love the heat, uh, so that's doing great. And then these watermelon we planted from seed a few weeks ago, they're really starting to take off, trying to keep them condensed to a specific area. And once each plant sets fruit, we will start limiting the size of these vines um, and it looks like so I mean there's a watermelon to be little female fruit so as soon as one of those gets pollinated we will try and limit the fruit production on these vines to one melon per plant so that hopefully they get ripe before our first frost. We've got another little female flower here on this one. And so as soon as one of them actually takes and pollinates, we'll start tipping them off and uh, go from there. All right, this amaranth is just amazing. So this is a single seed plant amaranth over here instead of planting them densely like we're gonna see in a minute. And the base of this amaranth is a solid two and a half inch around at the base. And it's starting to put off, and I think it's gonna form heads on each of these major limbs. And I'm really loving this red Hopi amaranth. I think that's what it's called. Um, Cause it just gives a beautiful pop of color and adds a lot of ornamental value to the garden, and it's probably gonna produce some seed heads for us. The sunflowers, again, they're just making their way through their cycle, and we probably ought to go ahead and plant some seed for a third round of sunflowers. This white amaranth is just now starting to put on some little heads. We've got and it doesn't seem to be thriving the way that the red amaranth is, but 
you know, we'll see. It may end up being real pretty. All right, the okra. So I probably need to come out and cut some okra. These are like the perfect size right here. And they're still real tender, even at that size. And we just cut these into rings and uh, freeze it until we get a gallon and then we'll freeze dry it. So I've got more production coming on there. Then the amaranth that's planted densely. So this is just our broadcast seed down on top of the ground and kept it moist until they germinated. I mean, I raked it in there a little bit, but, uh, and it's just real pretty. And so if I back up, but we're getting lots of grain heads on it. The stems, I'm surprised I haven't had more wind damage because we've had some significant wind, uh, but they really held up really well. And some of them are you know, inches apart at the base. And the seed heads, look like this. And so they're just real pretty. Now the corn is starting to come on. These ears, some of the ears are filling out better than others. And some of the ones on the inside, it's just not real clear that the pollination was as, in, as good on the inside. Um, we've got some little ears over there. We'll come back to the corn when we walk through here and around through the arch trellis. These cantaloupes seem to be doing pretty good. Like I said, the temperatures have been really hot and that main east trellis gets a lot of direct sun and it gets it all day long. Uh, we're going to need to start harvesting some jalapeno or uh, Tabascos. They are starting to ripen. Uh, we've got this seven pot is uh, coming on. And it's got other peppers on it as well and that one you know is potted and it takes more water and more maintenance but that's okay because I'm hoping I can overwinter it more easily with less transplant shock these peppers are all still doing good I don't think I have any ripe habanadas yet that I've seen um, so they just continue to grow and put on more flowers and peppers. And so they're going to have, gonna have a great harvest there when we're done Been trying to keep the cilantro seeds watered. I haven't watered them yet this morning, but I need to, we're starting to get some red Buena Mulata peppers, you know, ripe peppers. And then, and I'm not sure on this, if this is the white version or the red version. I thought initially it was the white version of this pepper, but it's, they look like they're starting to yellow and maybe they're the red version. We'll, we'll find out. Um, this is one of the clone transplants right here of the carbon tomato. And these limbs in the back, they're going to get a heavy prune. We've got tomato fruit set on them all throughout in there. So they're going to produce, and those vines come from a main plant that's back here. But um, that one is doing good. We've got another one still in the bucket that we'll take a look at when we get around to it. And by bucket, I mean pot. <clears throat> And this is the Ken Star Yellow Starburst. And I think there's actually, I think we looked last week and there was actually plenty of uh, ripe 
fruit, a couple of ripe fruit on here. So that one's doing good. We've been doing some pruning out here and harvesting a lot of tomatoes of the carbon. And uh, these are just super delicious. A couple here that are ripening. And the Prudence Pride tomatoes are really starting to ripen now at this point. And there's still a slow ripening tomato, but that's actually okay because it's spreading the harvest out. The Brussels sprouts, you know, they're just super slow and I'm not sure, you know, the heat, we're getting some of the sprouts at the base starting to open because of the heat. Um, you know, I'm just not sure if this is the variety for us. So I think next year I'm going to try some green ones that uh, are faster maturing. We've been able to keep the harlequin bugs at bay and we're starting to get some nicer leaves on the kale. So hopefully we'll get a good batch. And there's a harlequin bug. You just gotta be on the lookout for these and get them and then look for any eggs. And then we put them in the bucket. So I think we're gonna get some, you know, good quality leaves if we stay on top of this uh, to make, to either eat as kale or to make freeze-dried kale powder out of. Um, we talked about these cantaloupes going around this ring. One of the things that we did do is the zucchini we totally cut it out a couple of days ago. We're gonna let the root kind of decay here for a little bit. And then uh, we'll try and re rework this pot and get something else back into it. Uh, let's see, I have done some pruning on this cucumber and it looks like I need to do a little more. So I don't want it tearing up my pepper plant. And so we're gonna come back through here and cut off a bunch of that. We'll get this little cuke here. We've got tons of these slicing cucumbers. You're gonna see those more easily in a minute when we get into the arched trellis. Um, and then the tomatoes, we're just trying to get back control of the pruning on these. We do have a lot of cherry tomatoes. Uh, this Super Sweet 100 has just went wild. So it has gone all the way down to that end of the trellis. And we just need to get control back uh, of this so that we can get in here and get the cherry tomatoes. Because as you can see from the bottom there and all this heat, a lot of them are starting to crack, dry, drop. And that's just gonna be a mess because I don't want all those volunteers coming up in this bed next year. Uh, we have been able to reach in and get some of the chocolate pear tomatoes, but we're just gonna have to come out here and spend time pruning. And I've got some business and family obligations coming up this weekend. So this one starting to set peppers. Oh, look at that. So we're in the corn now. And look right there. We lacoche or Mexican truffle. And that's a corn fungus. And interesting, you know, it's not on an ear. Normally where we see this, it's on an ear. This is actually on the stalk. So let me zoom back out. 
and we'll take a look at this. And this is, right now, is edible. This would be a good time to come pull this before the fungus fills up with spores and releases a lot of spores. <clears throat> Think of it as a mushroom. It's not really a mushroom, but, you know, it is used for culinary uh, to eat. This ear is uh, not quite as full as the ones on the west side. And what's interesting is, you know, this area probably gets more water than the other side. Um, wow, look at that one. There's, that one is a mature Ulicete over there, and that one is beyond eating, but yeah. So that one, you can see it's all black and the spores have already come out and uh, I don't think I mean, that bottom piece may still be good. Those are called galls, the individual sacks or compartments. So, let's see, do we have any more? We normally see this every time we grow like a drying corn, and this is white Cherokee corn. Um, it's not technically a dent corn, but it is made for grinding. Um, I mean, you might be able to pop it, but it's not, it is not a popcorn per se. Um, but every time we grow the grinding type corn, we get some of this and, uh, we'll have to cook up some tacos or quesadillas with that stuff and show you guys, <clears throat> but hopefully we'll get a good harvest of corn. Let's turn now to the rainforest pepper. And again, still with the flowers. I mean, this is definitely a replant for next year uh, to do this again. And uh, it's kind of early in the morning, but <laughs> there's a lot of leaves, but hopefully you can see there, we've just got tons of ripening peppers and there's tons more back here and so some of these are probably ripe so this one here just a beautiful pepper and it's definitely fruity and uh, these are a favorite, a new favorite. And this is the first year we've grown them. All right, so now to the trellis and I'm kind of close here. Um, we've done some significant pruning on the inside of this, uh, the beans on the right side I mean, they're vigorous beans and we got tons of growth. The cucumbers have grown completely over the top and are down the other side now. And the beans have grown up and they're on the other side. So there may be a lot of competition there that's affecting some of the production, but uh, we have tons and tons of cu. We just cannot use these quick enough. And these are the slicing cucumbers, you know, and so we've been giving a lot of them away. One of the things about this, the beans that I planted this year, and I don't know if it's because they're just not getting enough intense sunlight, but they get a lot of sunlight. They're not a single bean. And I've seen some grasshoppers, you know, up in here. And I don't know if the grasshoppers are just eating the beans. Right now, that's the only thing I can imagine because we normally don't have problems with the beans. But uh, these cucumber vines are kind of, we are pickled out. So when it comes to picklers, pickling cucumbers in particular, you see I got one right there. It's a pretty big one that I need to get and get it out of here. 
Um, there's lots of pickling sized ones that are ready to go. Uh, but we're about pickled out. We easily have a year supply easily. So we've let this one, some of these others accidentally got large enough to let go to seed. And so I'd laid them out there to, to fully ripen and start decomposing. But now that we're officially pickled out, you know, we're letting this will be our seed stock right here. And it's just going to hang on the vine until it starts to literally decompose or dry up. Um, and we're just going to leave it there. And that's going to signal to the plant that, hey, I've done my job, production ought to slow down. So what needs to happen is I need to come in here and plant peas in here, get them germinated up, and then come in and take out all these cucumber vines because we've got plenty. And that's partly we do this for, on the trellis anyway, for the aesthetics. It's a really nice place. Um, kids like to come in here and play in the tunnel and stuff. And so it just makes a, a good area uh, aesthetically to be, but it's really for the food. So we need to get the, the cucumbers out. And so speaking of food, um, you can see that variegated leaf there. That is the uh, North Georgia candy roaster vine. And it now has made its way, oh, halfway down, at least halfway down to the trellis, which is 12 feet, 16 feet. So um, it's making its way <laughs> all the way from over there. And the sweet potatoes, again, I mean, it's doing good. It's putting on plenty of, of leaves and I'm not a sweet potato aficionado, but my understanding is the leaves are an indication of the production to come once we get to frost, so we'll see. Uh, this rainforest, not rainforest, this is uh, El Oro del de Ecuador, and look, there's a Japanese beetle. We'll get him. All right. Um, and they're putting on peppers, but it is a little slower than rainforest. I haven't tasted any yet because they're still all green. Um, and so the verdict's out on if we're gonna grow this one again next year, but we're definitely growing rainforest. All right, ground cherry's doing fine. Like I said in the last episode, <laughs> this is kind of a weed. Uh, we only need one plant, so we pull all the volunteers, or try and pull all the volunteers except for the one. Uh, we've got plenty of butternut squash that are hidden around. Can't really see them for the leaves, but they're in there. So there's gonna be plenty of butternut squash and the North Georgia candy roaster. We've got several that, Are coming on and that one's getting bigger got a couple of butternuts around it so and we've got other fruits setting on the north georgia candy roaster uh, but it's just been amazingly hot here's some of the aunt molly's ground cherry and pick those up take those with us and so they're they're all starting to come on there all right, so everything is looking good over here on the winter squash side. We have cleared out some basil. We've left some for the pollinators and reseed. We're going to end up cleaning up this whole bed because we're going to plant fall crops in here. Um, we got rid of the zucchini, but we still got the yellow crookneck squash, and it's still is doing good. Uh, it's still putting on fruits and we're getting it trellised up. This little trellis here, so we're probably gonna keep it for a little bit, but my guess is in the next couple weeks, we'll get rid of this too. 
This is another one of the carbon tomato clones that I haven't put out. So I started two clones in case one of them died. And this one now is just thriving in the pot. Um, but I think we're gonna put it right there in front of that post and see if we can get another carbon tomato going for late fall production. So you can tell if you've been watching the videos, we've come in here and started to take over with some significant pruning. And I mentioned on the other side how much that Super Sweet 100 cherry tomato vine had moved over. And I mean, it's, it's pretty aggressive. So uh, this bed, I guess this is, would be an update for this week. Uh, so we did harvest all the carrots and the beets. And if you stay up with our Instagram, you're probably up to date on this content, but we harvested all that, chopped and dropped the leaves off the top of the beets and the carrots. Uh, then we processed the carrots, canned them and froze them and put the peels and the tops, you know, back in the bed. So you'll see some little chunks of carrot in there. Uh, because then we covered it with compost and then put a little layer of pro mix on top as the mulch and we just been trying to keep this wet and so this has been in this state for one week and we'll probably plant seeds into it a week from now and then plant transplants if we're going to put transplants in this bed that would be another week so it's got nearly a month to rest and for the earthworms to come up mix some of that organic matter uh, in and really take care of that. And you'll be surprised how quick they can do that if you have a healthy uh, earthworm population. That is a view of one of the Prudence Pride tomatoes and uh, it'll be ripe soon enough. So the Buena Mulattas are doing good. There's some basil that we've left because it's not fully into seed, and I think I saw some ripe ones. Ripening ones. Yeah. So the red ones are ripe. The purple ones you can use any time, but uh, they're not ripe, and they actually start out kind of a white, violet color, and then they just get darker and darker. Peach charapita is doing excellent, it's still growing. And we'll try, and this will be another one that we try and take in over the winter and just keep it so that maybe it'll produce quicker next year. And these things are an interesting little pepper. They've got quite the ornamental value to them, number one. But number two, you can actually use these and they give you just a little pop of heat and it doesn't last forever. Uh, so that's real good. We still got some other volunteer basil around so we're gonna be able to have basil for caprese salad and other things and we're gonna let this one plant go to seed and do its thing uh, these peppers are doing good we harvested some red ones and used them in our relish yeah so there's that one's starting to ripen up and these are from save seed and uh, we will save seed from these again this year uh, the standard looking pimento is also from the same save seed as these, <clears throat> but you can tell the form is different, right? So those are more long, like a horn style pimento. And that's really what we're looking for. Um, we'll still save some seed from these, you know, standard shape pimentos, but that's not really what we're looking for. What we would prefer are the longer, you know, closer to a bell pepper, but really a horn style uh, pepper instead of the squat little pimento ones. But these taste great. And so we'll, we'll still plant the plain old, this one's almost right, right there. My angle is not good and there's lots of leaves in the way, but. Okay, so that's really the garden update for the first week in August. You can hear the 
<laughs> marching band. I can hear it. So let's take a look at the figs and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so we're over here at the Desert King and this has really started to flourish now that it's in the ground. You'll see that there's a lot of growth starting to come on uh, here. And so I think this has been in the ground coming on two weeks. And so I think all of these nodes have some sort of growth on them, even the small new growth coming out. And this is a bush style or it's pruned in a bush style. Because it produces uh, Reba crop figs. Uh, it'll produce the main crop, but we don't have the fig wasp or shouldn't have the fig wasp in this area. And so the main crop won't ripen. And so this is really used for Breba production uh, every spring. And so we're gonna prune it that way. Um, this brown turkey fig that's potted up that used to be in the ground there, it's just doing excellent. I mean, look at the growth that it's put on there. I mean, all this is from since when we potted it up and it's just looking great. So happy with that. Let's move over and take a look at the Chicago Hardy. All right. The Chicago Hardy is doing really well. It's got a lot of growth on it and uh, it's even got figs. And I think last episode, I didn't really get any, I think all my close-ups of the little baby figs were blurry. So let's see if we can get a shot here. So you can see there's one back over there in the upper left. Little figs. And there's others, there's a lot of spots where there's little figs in the, popping up in the crotches. Now, you know, will these make figs? Will they ripen before our first frost? I have no idea. You know, this is a first year fig <clears throat> in the ground. So I don't know. It's only been here a couple months and uh, we'll see. But hopefully, I mean, then, you know, <clears throat> that'd be fun if we got some figs. So those are the highlights. And if you've been, wow, that fig's quite a bit larger. Yeah, there's a, let's get a zoom in on that. So it's quite a bit bigger. So it's getting figs. Maybe we'll get a couple. But that's gonna wrap it up for this week. So uh, if you want extra content, follow us at Frosty Sith on Instagram. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, take a minute, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so that you get notification every time we add new content here to the channel. Uh, for those of you looking for our most recent backcountry expedition, I I'm working on it. It's just uh, managing getting everything collected and organized and, and edited, but uh, we'll try and get that out soon. And in the meantime, we'll be coming at you with other gardening, canning, type videos, whatever we're actually doing in real life. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And remember, whenever you can, get up, get out, live a little. See ya.